Hey everyone, and thank you for joining us here at I-80 Sports. We're doing our 2023 MLS team previews, and today is Austin FC. Thank you so much for joining us. By now you should know we're up to previewing each and every Major League Soccer season, bef Major League Soccer team before the 2023 season, bringing on experts from all around the country. And we are here today with Hernan from We Are Austin TV. Hernan, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Pleasure to be back here. You guys always show us love. And whenever I hear 180 call, I know that I got to show up. There you go. And I uh, got the Los Verdes shirt on there, showing the love right back. Um, it's been a great, it's been a fun season, huh? Soccer, soccer, oh, yeah. is a, soccer is a fun sport, isn't it? It is. You know, we got blessed with the, with an incredible World Cup during this um, off season, I guess you could say. But before that, for Austin fans, I mean, we had a we had a fairy tale season. I mean, from second to last place in year one to second place in the Western Conference in year two. I mean, how can you not be happy as an Austin FC fan? You could be one of those teams like a Houston Dynamo fan or one of those bottom table teams, and of course, you're going to say that you had a bad time. But for Austin fans, we did pretty good. Had to get that little jab in there. Uh, you know, Coco, you Copa know Tejas, uh, to get it out. rivals. All right. Well, we're not going to see them until the end of the season. They're still putting a whole roster together over here while we're while we're flying easy in Austin. Let's uh, take a second. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, plug your show, and, and let us know where we can find your work. For sure, for sure. For everybody that you know doesn't know about We're Austin TV, uh, we cover everything that has to do with Austin. Uh, we're outside the stadium whenever the season is um, taking place. We're during the home games. Uh, talking to fans, getting uh, their opinion on what happened in the game, either good or bad. We're always out there talking to the fans. We also do uh, Twitter spaces, so you can check us out there. The podcast that we run is called Top Flight Podcast. Um, you can check that out in our bio. Uh, I'm the host on that show. Uh, we also have Brian on there, Bali. He's always dropping those uh, hot takes. And also Primo, Primo dropping some very interesting takes on there. Uh, but, yeah, pretty much you can find us on Instagram, YouTube. And uh, Twitter. Twitter is where we mainly do a lot of our chit chat. And Twitter has been crazy the past couple of uh, months, actually. Love it. So let's get into club culture. That's where we're going to start. Um, team, culture, ownership. Let's say uh, some of our listeners might not be familiar with Austin FC. You guys are a new team. Tell us everything we need to know. Okay, so if you're new and you don't know anything about Austin FC, well, for starters, know that this jersey you will no longer be able to buy. We're going to get something new here coming. I think the... The rumor around is that uh, after Valentine's Day, we should have a new home kit. So we'll get, we can start off there. We used to have this beautiful striped kit, but it's going to be different. This is a home kit. We have that mint one, but you should you you uh, you might have seen some uh, photos already. Other things that you might need to know or that you have to know is uh, we're a big, big fan base. We have probably one of the biggest fan bases in the MLS. I mean, top three for sure. Uh, we recently went to the Western Conference Finals, and I got to see what the LAFC fans were like at home. And they really changed my perspective on the fans in MLS. I mean, they have something crazy out there. But Austin FC is really close to that, and we're building. We're building, we're building. We're a very young club. We're big on the music in Austin FC. At Q2 Stadium, if you've gone to a game or if you want to go to a game because you've seen some videos or some footage, you got to know about La Murga, Los Verdes, just like he has on in his shirt. Can you please show off that shirt? Los Verdes there right there. That's the, there. that's the biggest supporters group for Austin FC. We also got the Austin Anthem, Oak Army. A uh, bunch of great people down there. But I put a big emphasis on La Murga de Austin. They're the ones that are really the heartbeat of that stadium. They're the ones that lead the chance. We have uh, multiple bombos. We have multiple people on trumpets, multiple capos in the stands, not even focusing on the game, but just their main purpose. Their only, the only thing that they want to do is keep the fans engaged in the game and enchant. And that's exactly what they do the whole 90 minutes. When they say 90 minutes, they're serious. They go all 90 minutes. So we're big on that, big on culture. Uh, let's see what else can we add on there. I mean, owner Anthony Percourt um, oh, involved in some major league soccer drama. He used to own the Columbus Crew. Tried to move him down to Austin, and he got a sweetheart deal. They said, "Hey, you can't move this club, but we'll give you your own." Um, he got some investors, some celebrity investors down in yep. Austin who are really involved with the club. And uh, third year charm, right? Matthew McConaughey. Maybe we can get a Rexham FC friendly down there at a, a Q2. I don't know. We got some celebrity owners getting into soccer now. We got Matthew McConaughey with Austin FC. Reese Witherspoon is over there with uh, 
uh, Nashville, right? And then we have this new Rexham thing going around with uh, Ryan Reynolds yeah, yeah, and Ryan Reynolds some and, other uh, actor. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. All right. So let's get into last season recap a little bit of what happened there. Austin FC did finish uh, near the top of the table last year, second place with 16 wins, 8 draws, and 10 losses. 65 goals scored, 49 goals against. That gives him a plus 16 goal differential. And uh, here are the top contributors. Sebastian Drusi, 25 goals, 5 assists. Maxi Uruti, 9 goals. Diego Fagundes, 6 goals, 13 assists. Ethan Finlay, 5 goals, 5 assists. And Musa Jite, 5 goals and 2 assists. When you look at this chart, what does this make you think about from last year? Well, for starters, Sebastian Drusi overperformed. And he really just showed everybody what a DP signing should be looking like, what kind of numbers a DP should be putting up for an MLS team. I mean, 25 yeah. goals, five assists. Maybe he could have gotten some more assists, but he was busy producing those goals for us. Um, one other thing that I can tell you is that the Maxi Urruti goals, I mean, that should have been in double digits. Definitely not good enough for a striker at Austin FC. Uh, let's see. One more thing, if I could please note on this list, is Ethan Finley. I mean, who thought Ethan Finley was going to be on this list of the top contributors of 2022? I mean, everybody thought that Ethan Finley, when he got to Austin FC, was just going to come arrive, maybe just be a role player every now and then get some minutes. But this guy really took that right position under his wing and made it his for, a, I guess, a brief period of time because Josh Wolf had uh, uh, Rigoni come in every now and then and uh, take his shine whenever he was actually, you know, steamrolling. But uh, Ethan Finley, five goals, five assists. I mean, that was actually something to be very proud of for him. I mean, this this season. But yeah. going to I my mean, main for, point. For me, it was Diego Fagundes was kind of the okay. surprise. I, you forget this guy still has a little bit in the tank. He's only going to be 27 years old this year. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, been yeah. in the league since he was, what, 15? Uh, so he's been in the league 12 years now, and it just kind of always seems in my head like he's an old man. We should kind of write him off. Definitely a contributor. Yeah. Surprise the hell out of me. 100%. I mean, he, he's, he's over there putting up DP numbers almost. And this guy is definitely not on that contract. Um, he should, you know, he should be getting something better than what he currently has. That's not for me to really discuss. I'm not the sporting director. So maybe Austin MC, down, or not, maybe Austin MC is looking for a new sporting uh, uh, director after what came on today into the news. But Diego Fagundes, man, you're right. 100%. Diego Fagundes overperforming and... Ever since his time in the New England Revolution, you thought that maybe he was just going to fade away, die out. But he makes this big change with Austin FC and completely just gives his career a new breath of uh, fresh air, you can say. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about some of the players who will not be returning this season. Cecilio Dominguez, I think he played four games last year. He had some domestic issues and has been shown the door. Uh, Felipe Martins, not really much of a loss at this point of his career. A, a, a solid depth piece, a, you know, a... Uh, he's better at flapping his trap and angering other players than he is at yes, keeping correct. the ball at his feet at this point in his career. Um, Tom, Tomas Pochettino, who was, I guess, one of the biggest upsets um, during his tenure in Austin FC, just never came to fruition. Some other guys who were just kind of seen as depth pieces, Tarbell, Stroud, Danny Hosen. Ruben Gabrielson. That's the one that hurts. Yes. Let's talk about yes. that. That's the one that hurts because... When this guy arrived to the club, we thought, okay, this is going to be our center back, our main center back coming from Europe um, experience. There was a picture of him with Holland. So we were like, wow, this guy played with Holland. Wow, fantastic. He was uh, he was coached by Ole Gunnar uh, Schultz. Ole Gunnar Schultz, yeah, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's very hard to say his uh, uh, last name. But we, we thought, okay, this guy's going to be here for a quite some time. He's going to be our leader in the defense. You know, season two starting to play out. We concede less goals. The partnership between him and uh, Cascante grew immensely. And he, he wasn't officially the captain, but a lot of the fans and a lot of the players even themselves saw him as a, as a, as a captain symbol almost. Whenever Ring wasn't really giving the team that leadership, we yeah. looked at Ruben, and Ruben was the one that pushed us forward. When we lost the, the, the Western Conference Finals at LAFC 3-0, that was a big disappointment. And Ruben, after the the game was over and the celebrations were taking place. LAFC was celebrating in the confetti, the players with their uh, uh, children. Ruben Gabrielson was sitting down, just looking completely bummed out. Uh, shout out to Rudy Arredondo. He was the uh, photographer that got this shot. He he got Ruben Gabrielson just staring at the LAFC players uh, celebrating. And they, they asked him about this later on. And the quote that he said was he wanted to take in that pain. He wanted to feel that hurt because he wanted his kids to be the ones celebrating 
in that confetti, in that party. He wanted to be lifting up the cup. So he, he was taking that pain in himself in order for him to be able to bounce back next season, year uh, 2023, year three for us, right, for the club. And yeah. that's exactly something that is not going to happen because Ruben Gaberson, like you said, is back in Norway. He's with his old uh, old club, Lillstrom SK, Lillstrom SK, his boyhood club. He did debut with them. So it hurts, man. It hurts a lot to see him go. But when you find out what was the reason for his departure, it really humanizes the situation. And, and, it, and it really makes you think, well, you know what, man? Sometimes family is bigger than a lot of these things, man. Ruben Gaberson had to leave Austin FC because uh, one, of his, one of his children needed uh, special care. So he, he figured out what... You know, he talked with his wife and he said that the best thing for them to do was for, was for him to go back to Norway to uh, be able to take care of his family, ending his contract with Austin FC a year uh, before that it ran out. Absolutely. So he was replaced. And let's talk now about some of the players who, who were moving in. Um, we got Leo Weissenen is the new center back. He'll be pairing up with Cascante, Romagna, Keller, you know, other usual suspects there. Um, what does he bring to the team? So Leo Weissen brings a lot of experience. You know, this guy is uh, he's a, a international center back. Uh, he's been in many uh, prestigious competitions. You can say he's been in um, World Cup qualifiers. He's been in the Euro games. He's played uh, those nation league games. So there, there's photos of him guarding Karim Benzema. There's photos of him guarding Kylian Mbappe. I mean, this guy is not just, you know, just a guy out there kicking the ball around in the park. He comes with a lot of experience. And one thing about Lil Weissenden that's important is seems like Josh Wolf was playing a bit of a little bit of uh, 4D chess because he he went to Houston and he got Andy Lunkovist, who um, who was in the same team as um, Lil Weissenden years yeah. back, uh, which is IF, IF Ellsborg. And not only that, there's a connection with Alex Ring as well. I mean, they're both Finnish players. There's going to be a bit of uh, camaraderie, I guess, right there. Sure. You can say those guys are definitely going to be getting along. Alex Ring didn't have that person with him last season. Now he's he's getting a bit of a, a bit of a click, I guess you can say. Now this guy, Leo Weissenden, he's tall, but he's not that physical presence that 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 you saw uh, Ruben Gaberson was in the air. Yeah, or even, I'm seeing uh, him at 6'1", 175. So yes, he's, yes. So he's tall and skinny. Shorter and skinnier than I am, yeah. Yes, but in the photos that we've seen recently with Austin FC training, uh, you know, the media team dropping some teasers where uh, they're in the offseason right now, they're in Tampa or in uh, uh, Clearwater. Vicenin looks a little bit, you know, he looks a little bit jacked. He looks like he's been hitting the weights. He looks like he put on some little bit of tricep muscle, a little bit of bicep action here and there. So I'm very excited to see what the $30 million facility here in Austin, Texas can do to this kid. Absolutely. He's still going to be uh, 25 years old at the, uh, mid midway through this season. So He's a kid. He's a kid. Yeah. Yeah. He's a kid. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, also heading in, um, you you had a, a handful of other players. Jassy Zardes is going to be replacing Uruti. Um, Uruti scored nine goals last year. I expect Jassy Zardes to be maybe not an everyday starter, but a 66-33 split. I mean, this is going to be his position he is going to be the striker on this football team still has a little bit in the tank maybe not the golden boot uh contender that he was his time in columbus but uh what i do like about him he has that size he can play you know with his back to the goal um and and find space he's um not five foot four so he has that going for him um talk about how giusti zardes fits on the squad man i think this this kid this guy i'm 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 going to stop saying kid. This guy fits like a glove to this team. I mean, we need a striker. We still haven't had that that deadly uh, number nine that's up there, just solid up there waiting for the balls, ready to really bang in those goals. That's why Drusy's numbers were so high last season, because we couldn't really um, rely on a number nine to be banging in those crucial goals whenever it really came down to it. Now, uh, one thing about Gazi's art is, Jazzy Zard is, is that, He's worked with Josh Wolf, with Josh Wolf before. This isn't the first time that they meet. They have history together. In fact, Zardi's best season came under Josh Wolf when he was the assistant for Columbus, if I'm not mistaken. I think he got up to 18 goals and he he got some award, maybe being I think it was the MLS comeback player of the season, if I'm not mistaken. But Zardi's with Wolf, that clicks. Now Wolf is gonna obviously he's the head coach of this team and and he's getting more comfortable. And in, in the first season, Josh Wolf said it himself that he was maybe a bit more shaky. And in season two, he was ready to go. Nobody expected him, them to have the the success that they had in season two. But Josh Wolf said recently on a podcast 
I think it was shot in like Netherlands. Uh, he said that he was the only one that believed in the success for season two. So for season three, I'm expecting a lot more of the same of, of Josh Wolf. I think this guy is a man with a plan. He has definitely the structure, the system that he wants to follow. And getting a guy like Zardis is no accident. You know, it's it's no mistake. He knows what he wants and he's going out there to get it. Zardis and Austin, I'm very excited for, for this move. I see him getting more than 10 goals. Zardis and, and, and Austin FC, more than 10 goals. Love it if he can stay on the field. I mean, he, he is a little bit older. He, uh, this will be his age 31 season. Um, so this is his 10th league year in Major League Soccer. Um, you know, 2018, 2019, 2020, he scored 19, 13, 12 goals. Yeah, we was on the men's national team for, for quite some time yeah. um, right before this current uh, World Cup. So I'm, I'm very interested in seeing what he brings. Um, kind of a different guy. Uruti. Great with the ball at his feet. He's a good scorer. He's yeah. quick. Gite for me is kind of that over the top long ball, speed, 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 pure. Hold up play. Um, that kind of thing. And Jossi Zardes is going to be back to the goal, get the ball at your feet, turn, shoot, slow the ball down, um, and and just be large. He be that presence that maybe they don't have else words on the field. Um, also listed as an incoming player for me is Emiliano Rigoni. Not quite his first season. I think he played a couple handful of games last season with Austin. Um, a super, super skilled player that was really, really touted. Um, they paid some money for him, but never really put up in any league he's played in. Um, when I look here, I think his, his most goals he's ever scored in a season is uh, surprisingly low. 11 for Independiente in 2016-2017. Besides that, we're talking 3-3-0-2-1-4. Three, three, what does Rigoni bring to the team, and what does Austin see in him uh, that maybe other people have? I mean, that's something that a lot of the fans have been asking themselves for, for quite some time, especially after seeing what he did in the few games that he had last season. But uh, Josh Wolf was uh, quoted one saying that he had been scouting Rigoni for two to three years before signing him. So you got to ask yourself, in those two to three years that he was scouting Emiliano Rigoni, what was he seeing in him? Because the numbers weren't there. I mean, you said his last really successful season was with Independiente. And you said 2016, mate, that's six years ago. Yeah, That's six years ago. Yeah. So, so in, in the two, three years, what was Josh Wolf seeing in him? I mean, I don't know exactly what these scouts or Josh Wolf saw in Rigoni, but it must have been something uh, pretty, uh, pretty crazy in order for them to bring them, bring him to Austin FC. He did play with uh, Drusi in Zenit, so this might have been just something to uh, yeah. maybe try to get Drusi more comfortable, try to build around him. This could have been something that Drusi said, "Hey, we should go get this guy." But Josh Wolf himself said that he was scouting Rigoni for two to three years. Last season, he started in the Western Conference Final. Ahead of Ethan Finley, a lot of fans did not like that. They were not happy with that because Ethan Finley was actually producing for this team and connecting yeah. with Juicy, connecting with Fagundes um, up top. And then Emiliano Rigoni slots in, starting position in the Western Conference Final, and he just drops a goose egg. Just a stinker of a game. LAFC blew us out the water. And a big part of that was because we couldn't create anything in the attack, and Rigoni had a lot to do with that, unfortunately. All right, so now... Let's wipe that slate clean. We're looking ahead towards 2023. Let's talk about depth chart, coaching tactics. I'm going to pull the depth chart up in a little bit, but if I was to turn on an Austin FC game, what's the style of play? What would I see? Definitely build up from the back. I mean, that's been the thing since day one. Just build up from the back. Doesn't care. Um, doesn't matter if we mess up in the back and we get scored on. Obviously, we saw our center backs and our goalkeeper play some silly balls out from the back that we paid for with some silly goals that we conceded in year one and year two. It, it has been cleaning up. Uh, in season two, year two, our buildup from the back got really, really good. I mean, year one, you could tell what we wanted to do, but in year two, you saw that the idea was starting to take uh, starting to take place. It, the the snowball was starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, I guess yeah. you can say. Josh Wolf's ideas, his philosophy is really um, starting to show in, in these players. And I think one of the main reasons that that is starting to take place is because of some of the uh, departures that we've, uh, that we've had. I mean, we've had, let's see, we've had one, two, three, four, about 10 departures, close to 10 or maybe over 10 departures this season. And a lot of these names that I'm seeing on here, were guys that just couldn't buy into the system that Josh Wolf wanted to play. You know what sure. I'm saying? One of the main names that I can bring out is Pochettino. You know, he was one of the big disappointments for Austin FC. He didn't really buy into the philosophy of Josh Wolf, and boom, he went. We we keep on bringing new players, and Josh Wolf is just finding out who is able 
and who has the quality to play the kind of football that he wants to play. Because let's let's be 100% honest. Playing at the back, like if you're Barcelona, isn't for everybody, especially if you don't have the type the, of if, players. If you don't have Alex Ring running around in midfield, uh, swiping up the errors, I could 100%. see that making him a little more comfortable there, um, for sure. Now... Um, when you when you talk about a lot of a lot of turnover that happens with expansion teams, you see with the expansion draft, you get three right wingers, three center, twelve center backs, three, you know, and you just sort to see what gels and what guys, you know. So I th- I think Austin's getting to a point where we're gonna start seeing kind of the same names over and over again, and you do see that at the top of the roster. Let's take a look at the depth chart I have here. We already talked about the center forward position, Jossi Zardes. Talked about the wingers, uh, Diego Fugunes and Ragoni. When you look at this midfield, Pereira, Ring, Rodney, Reyes, we're going to touch on that in a little bit. Backline, Gallagher, Nick Lima, Komanich, uh, and then we talked about the center backs already. So a lot of returning players, but maybe not all players returning to the same position. I see Rodney Reyes at uh, attacking midfielder, center, you know, playing at a number 10 spot. Not where I expected to see him, and you have him as a starter, which is... Uh, unique. I thought Rodney Redes was still working his way onto the roster. What gives you faith to put him there? Nah, man, that must be some. That I don't know. I don't know how Rodney Redes got onto there, brother. But hey, Rodney Redes, uh, in in preseason and in training, I will say that he has shown a lot of promise. Everybody in Austin FC knows that Redes is the king of preseason. He's the king of just doing really good in games that really have no real weight for Austin FC season. Um, Rotten Redes, I mean, he's a guy that has some type of quality. He has speed. I'm sure that Josh Wolf and, and, and co, whenever they went out to Paraguay or whenever they scouted him e- either via Zoom or something, they saw something in this kid. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he can turn it around this season. I mean, he, he is a very young player. He had a bit of a meniscus injury before that could have um, maybe... Um, stopped his his, uh, his progress yeah. right with um Austin FC but in in general he really hasn't given the fans or this team anything to really talk about i mean other players that have just got here are more exciting than him being here going into year 3 I think I found a typo from uh, last that that was a uh, part of last year's step. Yeah. So obviously we have to uh, uh center attacking midfielder. Um, obviously the, the multi goal scores, he, she should be up, up in the top, uh, the golden boot race with 25. Uh, again, this season would love to see that for sure. Um, let's talk about some uh, storylines to follow. Okay. Some storylines to follow. Now, um, if Drew C doesn't score 25 goals, who's going to pick up the slack? Man, you would have to you would have to hope um, the striker position picks up th- those uh, those goals because last season it really just wasn't good enough. You know, we had um, Uruti, Jite, they just really weren't getting that job done. Now you insert Zard as a player that you think is going to pick up at least ten goals, especially with the um, the chemistry that that he's had with with this coach. Do, you can also um, discard Fagundes. Fagundes is a player that no matter what is going to work hard, no matter what he faces in life, he's going to be giving you his 100% on that field. Doesn't matter what the kid has to uh, deal with. He's going to give you everything he's got in his gas tank. So expect Diego Fagundes to pick up some goals 100%. Um, Rigoni. Rigoni, we just had a bit of a, a chat two, three uh, minutes ago saying that he did not create anything last season. Well, the, one of the big arguments behind that was the fact that he did not have a full, complete preseason, right? This time, this this year, he gets a chance at a full preseason with this squad. He has Drusi to hang out with. He has Max Ruti to hang out with. I mean, Argentina won the World Cup. If, it, if that doesn't inspire this guy to bang in five to ten goals, I don't know yeah. what will at this point. I mean, take it from Drusi. He changed his number to number 10. I'm I'm, I'm thinking it's because, you know, trying to, trying to give some love to... Messi or, or something. Because right? he, he is was, the 10 on our depth chart, not is Rodney Redes. He exactly. is the number 10. Exactly. So <laughs> um, we expect Rigoni to definitely turn it around. We think that he's going to be the player that uh, that everybody expects him to be uh, this season coming up. So if Drusi doesn't get those 25 goals that you were saying, uh, Rigoni, Fagundes, and I'm going with Zardis over Uruti to pick up this slack. I'm really not in Uruti's camp. I know some fans are going to give me some slack for that, but I'm really excited about this Zardis signing, y'all. Now, there are some front office positions open. Now, uh, there was some uh, drama around uh, Reyna, um, and he also worked for Austin. He, did, he, did he step down? 
Yeah, so the news hit today. The news hit the fan today, around, like around what was it, like three o'clock, around yeah. something like that. Um, Austin FC released a, uh, a a tweet slash statement saying that Claudio Reyna had a, actually I have it right here. I'm gonna read it to you. It says, uh, "quote We are grateful for Claudio's contributions to both our club and our community." End of quote. Uh, Claudio Reyna has transitioned into technical advisor role, stepping down as the club's sporting director. That now, means he was sacked. It, I'll mean, translate that for you. Doesn't mean he was yes, like, yes, because it says that he stepped down. It says that he stepped down. So, I mean, and he's not out of a job 100%. He's going to be a technical advisor for Austin FC. To me, that sounds like uh, Claudio Reyna, you have power. We respect you. We're not going to fire you 100%, but you need to lay low for a little bit. And now the person that's taking his position as the sporting director is somebody that's been dropping uh, quotes on recent arrivals and departure for the past couple of weeks after this drama has been unfolding ever since the world cup took place and that's sean rubio he's the he, he's the director of uh, player personnel i'm um, maybe he i guess i could say the ex director of player personnel because he got promoted as uh, interim sporting director um not only did that happen josh wolf is also going to have a bit more work to do because he got uh he now has to pick up uh somebody else's slack on on their job and he has yeah. to uh he has to do that. I'm going to find that right now real quick. But Josh Wolf does have some more work to do, unfortunately. Absolutely. So I, when I when I hear uh, transitioned into a new job, it means he's paid too much to fire and he won't be around the team much longer. Um, we've had that at Red Bull um, certain times, like with Ali Curtis and, and some of these guys um, being, you know, transitioning from sporting director or, um, you know, general manager or whatever. It just means yeah. he's done. Um, yeah. Some drama and some just unneeded unneeded uh distraction yes and this this is actually exactly what that is i mean a lot of austin fans are you know actually a lot of austin fans were were calling for reina's head to um you know for for him to be sacked uh right after the world cup they were saying that this is just going to be negative press negative energy surrounding this team surrounding this this uh club heading into a new season it's exactly what we don't need now we're a little less than a month away from the first day of uh of match they won for the MLS and you know this is something that you don't want to be happening right now you know you want everybody to be getting in preseason gear you want everybody to be rocking and rolling together but now we have to deal with our sporting director our exporting director having to step down and uh, we have to just call audibles and people have to change jobs and this guy got to get promoted to interim role here and there and it's just unnecessary things that uh, that are taking place right now unfortunately because of some people's actions Absolutely. So let's go with some quick hit questions. Biggest strength of the team? Biggest strength of the team? The attack, 100%. Drusi Dior is going to lead this attack. He, I mean, this guy is, is enjoying life, enjoying his football. His hair is beautiful right now. His style is immaculate. He's just building his dream life here in Austin. He just had a baby boy. I mean, this guy's life is flying. The attack with Drusi, 100%. Biggest weakness? The defense. The defense, 100%, because uh, it's year three, man. We're we're rocking and rolling into year three, and we still don't have a solid center back partnership. That scares me. Um, a lot of people forget that we had Matt Beasler on this team. Uh, he was here for one season. Unfortunately, he, um, he ended his career because um, he had to take care of himself. So he ended his, his time with Austin early. He left. We got Ruben Gaberson. We were hyped about him, excited about him. We had a great season with him. He's gone now. Who does that leave? That leaves Julio Cascante, a guy that's been with us from day one, but he still hasn't built a solid center back partnership. If you look at some historic teams, some great teams all around the world, a lot of them have a really iconic, a really good center back partnership. And if we don't have that in Austin FC, you know, in year three, still, to me, that's a big weakness. Absolutely. One player outside of our projected starting 11 that is, we should know, that we should know. So we've talked about someone that we haven't mentioned yet that we need to know their name. CJ Faudry, uh, youngin, definitely very young player. He is, uh, I'm going to say Landon Donovan's prodigy. He was recently on the Texas Ring of Fire podcast. He did an interview with them. Shout out to the homies, uh, Texas Ring of Fire. Pretty much this kid is very young. He is like 18 or 19, but... But the reason why I even mentioned his name is because the club seems to be very excited about him. He got a shout out from Anthony Precourt. The Austin media team was dropping uh, teasers on him, dropping these videos of him. And this kid seems like he's the real um, the real deal as far as young college kids go in the MLS. We had success with Danny Pereira previously in the Super Draft. 
Uh, we had success, I guess you could say, with Kip Keller. He was projected to be number one. We got him um, shortly after. What was it like pick number five or number six that season? And now in the Super Draft, again, we cash in with Mr. CJ Fodry. I'm very excited about this kid. He went to college in uh, San Diego, San Diego's, the San Diego Aztecs, and he did very good there. He was voted um, the, I forget what conference they played, but the freshman of the conference of, of that year. And before okay. him, that award hadn't been given to that college in like 30-something years. So this kid is pretty special. He was coached by Landon Donovan. He's gotten minutes under Landon Donovan, and we all know who LD is. So if this kid can really replicate anything from Landon Donovan's game for Austin FC at such a young age and under Josh Wolf, that leadership, and with the players that we have right now at this club, I'm very excited about him. But I have one more name that I really want to drop, and that's Mr. Valentin Noel. Also from the Super Draft, the kid that we bought, uh, that we bought up for, we dropped fifty thousand dollars in in uh, in GAM. We sent it to St. Louis, the new expansion team coming up. Sure, we we got him uh, in preseason. He shined. He got a goal. You know, I know preseason goals don't really matter much, but based on his highlights and his awards that he got in college, I mean, this kid seems like he could be an interesting prospect. I'm not saying he's going to be a Danny Pereira or he's he's gotten me excited as CJ Fadri, but. I'm excited to see what Valentino Noel can do for this team. Now, he might end up with the MLS Next Pro team, but that doesn't mark the end of his career. That can just be another building block for his future yet to come. Love it. Um, one player most likely to drop out of the starting 11. So I don't have a name for you on this one, but I, I have kind of like a general position. Whoever the striker is, right, whoever wins that spot come, on, come, come day one, they're going to be under... A, a insane amount of pressure tremendous pressure now if a strike let's say it's Uruti based off of his uh, performances last season last season and Josh Wolf says you know what I know you more Zardi is new you get that start says Musa has is not with the team right now uh, for preseason so I doubt he would even be sniffing any minutes on uh, match day one so let's say it's Uruti come match day one we play St. Louis at home if Uruti doesn't perform after day one, day two, day three, expect Zardi to, to slot in there. And also vice versa. I mean, if Zardi starts and doesn't perform in, in the first couple of games, expect movement. Or Ruti is going to come in. If he doesn't perform, Jide is going to come in. So I don't have a name for you, but whoever the striker is, is probably going to be dropping in and out of that lineup. Last question, biggest rivals. Biggest rivals, obviously, the in-state rivals got to be FC Dallas and Houston. Um, FC Dallas, I'm not going to lie, before the playoffs, I hated facing FC Dallas because we had never beat them. It, we, we, we had struggled so much against FC Dallas. They came to Q2 Stadium, embarrassed us when uh, Ferreira and Pepe dropped absolute master classes versus us. Sure. So playoffs come around, we slap them up, beat them up, advance to the next round, and I lost all type of uh, fear, I guess you could yeah, say. That, that kind of happens FC sometimes. Dallas. And, and that, that's kind of an interesting rivalry because all three Texas teams were bottom three in the Western yes. Conference yes. last year. Uh -huh. And now you move up to Austin second, Dallas third. I mean, that, that's a huge... So, like, Houston's a little brother. They're 13th right now. You, you got to just, just dismantle them. Yes. FC Dallas is your rival. Yes. And I got, I got one more. And... And this this is really just after what transpired. This, you always remember your first season. playoff loss. You L always remember your first playoff LAFC, loss. LAFC, mate. LAFC has to be in that list. They have to be in that list after the way that they just demolished us in the Western Conference Final. Mm -hmm. And it stings. It stings 100%, man. And, and some stuff went on after the game and before the game of that Western Conference Final that I don't really want to talk about, but definitely rivals, bro. Definitely Love rivals. Hey, before you go... Tell Respect us one more. to them. Respect to the LAFC fans, 100%. They, they got a great team. Yeah. They went on to win the cup. Okay. That's about all for today. So, Hernan, why don't you tell us one more time where we can find your work? Yeah, definitely. You can check us out at uh, We're Austin TV or uh, Top Flight Podcast. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube, or uh, Twitter. Going to have a website coming up soon. I uh, got uh, articles that are going to be dropping as well. So, if great. you're interested... In that kind of stuff, if you like reading about Austin FC, we're going to have some uh, interesting interesting things coming up for you here in uh, Season 3. Absolutely. We love having you back. Uh, this is I-80 Sports. We're covering all 29 now Major League Soccer teams. Hernan, thanks again. Uh, great friend of the show. I know we'll have you on multiple times. Sure. Always hit me up if you need anything. Everyone else out there, have a great day.